Tom here from Lawrence Systems. And while the systems that we may be running work off of a binary ones and zeros, the decision is less binary about what software to run on them. And the words that I use always when people say, what should I load on my server starts with, it depends. And I know that's not the answer a lot of people want to hear, but at least I like to talk about the details of what it depends on to help you make an informed decision when you're building out your server. And today we're going to be talking about the 45 Drives Houston Command Center, because that came up a few times in the 45 Drives review video, which I'll leave a link to below, about when would you run that as opposed to just some, you know, dedicated NAS appliance software? What would be the advantage of one or the other? And of course, it depends on your use case. And we're going to talk about a couple of those use cases. Before we dive into those details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get your deals and discounts on products and services that we talk about on this channel. Now, let's start with what is 45 Drives Houston. And it's a combination of things here. They based it off of, and it's not hidden, it's the cockpit system. Now, I have another video where I talk about Linux web interfaces and what cockpit is, which is a really cool web interface for Linux, in short. And 45 Drives took and did some customization to it. And I have this pulled up on our GitHub page because I then loaded a Ubuntu VM and then we can see what it looks like over here. Then this is the actual 45 drive server. And you may notice they look the same. Yes, you do not have to have a 45 drives server in order to use the Houston Command Center. It's actually a really cool just open source project. And there's going to be a few minor differences we'll get to later in a video from when you run it on a 45 drive system, only because you have extra, extra hardware access. I'll show what that looks like. I showed it in the review of the 45 drive system. But for the most part, you know, it's the same software except for those couple extra modules. Now, why would you want to run something other than a NAS appliance software for something that is clearly designed to be a NAS storage, which is that particular box right there behind me, which is the Q30 Storinator. Now, NAS software is great, and it really does focus down to a purpose. If you want to do NFS shares, iSCSI shares, Samba shares, and really focus the purpose of it, there are plenty of NAS software tools out there that create that appliance environment where it's strictly this. But that also means you don't want to go off script. And what I mean by off script is what if you have some custom implementations? What if you have a lot of other services that you want to load on there that aren't natively available or completely built into that NAS appliance? That's where you start looking at things like the 45 Drives Houston because it's a custom solution. It's just based on Ubuntu and it allows the ease of management that you get from a NAS appliance by having the you know ability to manage all the hard drives in there and set up the zfs pools without having to do everything from the command line and i know the purists are saying you should just learn the command line but honestly if you're a developer and you don't spend a lot of time setting up zfs there's a lot of options there and i believe their zfs manager is probably one of the easiest tools i've seen to make managing zfs on linux really really easy without having to know a lot of the little ins and outs because zfs for all of its power comes great complexity and you know that making that a little bit easier to manage is important now let's take a look at each of these systems and talk about the houston command center they have done a lot of work to it lately including adding and actually i don't think i have a password this one this one's just there we go so this system right here is the one running and I have the ZFS module loaded. I, you know, follow the instructions on the 45 drives GitHub and pulled in their customized version of cockpit, have it all configured. And I, you know, have this uh, ZFS file sharing. Now there's no pools on this system because this is just running inside of a VM. But I just want to show, yes, it works. Yes, you can load it, including this new thing they just released, which is really cool, uh, having the benchmarks built in so you can go and go, you know what, what would be the max throughput that this particular system would have, max IOPS or do a performance spectrum. I thought that was really cool that they added this. And I'll be leaving a link to, of course, the 45 Drives video, YouTube page where they have a lot of good videos on not just the Houston system, but a lot of other things. They talk about storage servers and some of the things they specialize in. And of course, I like them a lot because they're a big open source company. Now, back to the topic over here. Yes, you can just run this yourself without a 45 drive server. And that's kind of my point. You can easily test this out. But if you are going to buy a 45 drive server and you like to see the extras, that's what this is in the Houston system. For example, 
this lines up with the way they laid out the drives. So first time you click on it, it pauses a little bit to load, but this is actually the layout so you can see which drive is in which bay when you're setting it up. And back to the, the system has 30 drives in it and uh, to, don't worry about the degraded, that's me, I was goofing with things. And including when you're goofing with things such as replacing drives and you accidentally goof one up because I did that. And, uh, but clear disk errors, offline disk, replace disk. This is really handy to be able to manage. There's 30 drives here and set up the configuration, figure out which one's faulted and be able to manage it. Big reason I really like the whole cockpit system and then the add-ons that 45 drives have. And talking about the customized solution. So this is based on Ubuntu and obviously Ubuntu being that it's a popular Linux distribution, you can really start putting a lot more into it to build out your own stack. And who would build out something really elaborate? Maybe Wendell from Level 1 Techs. And I wanted to bring this up because uh, me and Wendell were talking and he had this right up on our forums, at Level 1 Tech forums. And it's a in-depth when you were talk about going off script, something that you wouldn't normally get out of a standard NAS appliance. And someone may point out that, well, you can kind of customize NAS appliances and try to get some of these things in there, but it's not quite the same. And uh, Wendell did a good job of this write-up for all the extras he's done so far, which I'm probably going to be applying to my 45 drive server as well. This is uh, something he'd set up on there. And it's just, you know, some of those extra details. Matter of fact, he also has a write-up in here setting up the Samba. So the Volume shadow copies work properly. That's a really cool thing to have set up with ZFS uh, auto snapshots. And these are all extra, just standard Linux things you can do on here. Um, one of the other particular interesting things is being able to configure the NIC with RDMA for extremely fast SMB transfers. This is actually a pretty cool configuration as well. And that's still not supported on all NAS environments. It's kind of, it's a fairly up-to-date protocol to be able to really get the peak performance when you're talking 10 and 25 gig and uh, beyond when you're talking about really fast transfers and if you're setting this up for multi-path and video editing yeah that might be a good thing that you're looking at there uh, wendell also talks about land cache and steam cache but anyways kind of the reason i wanted to bring this up is one there's been a lot more development on the Houston OS. So if you were looked at it before and thought there was not much to it, check out what they've been doing. And they've been essentially like a code sprint here, just really uh, pushing a lot more forward over on the 45 drive side. And yeah, it's all publicly available. So whether you own a 45 drive server or not, hey, cool, it's completely available for you to start testing. Now, the final thing I'll say is it the custom solution thing. That is a real big question a lot of people come up with when they really want to dive deep in learning. And that's where I kind of will steer people away on that. It depends. They're going, hey, I want to load Podman. I want to start learning Docker. I want to learn all these other things. And I don't have time waiting for, you know, all these features to catch up to the latest version that you may not find in the appliance world i still steer people towards any type of nas appliance software when you're talking about you know you need a dedicated single purpose easy to manage in your environment but when you want to really build those custom solutions this is pretty cool to load this on top because it lives nicely with everything else that you may have on there separate web interfaces that you load and bind to it so you can load the cockpit for that side of the management but then still have all of your other services bound on there for uh things to run and it's you know kind of where i go with when answering this question when say when would you use this or when would you look at this and of course i know there's undoubtedly some linux purists who's maybe not quite as aligned with me i like to make systems easier and more accessible for people as long as that does not compromise or come at the cost of a less secure system and obviously with cockpit it's secure it's well done but it shouldn't be publicly exposed so don't publicly expose this but hopefully you weren't doing that with your nas appliance either but Either way, this is something I wanted to bring up. I'll leave links down below to all the stuff I talked about. Of course, to the write-up that Wendell did. If you want to start playing with it, customizing it, just spin up a Linux VM, spin up a Linux machine on there, and you can load it. And if you have a 45 drive server, hey, they'll ship it with their all configured with their fancy hardware stuff. I'll also leave links to the Storinator review that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. Yes, we're still using it. Yes, there's more plans and more things coming for it, looking in the future. And uh, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Shure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently.
And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.